Hello, hello, and welcome to another video. This is episode 34 of the podcast, and we're starting off with a bit of a shoulder update. I feel like I can finally truly say that things have gotten better. It's been about three weeks since the last podcast episode, and every single time I've given an update, I felt that throughout the, 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 the period in between the episodes, it has been going up and down and up and down with an average, like on average, a little bit better. But I think that I can actually say now that the past two and a half weeks, three weeks, I have significantly improved. I'm feeling less pain, I'm feeling less discomfort, and I'm actually getting better at some of the exercises that I've been doing. I can actually do push-ups at a, a, a pretty, I would say, pretty quick pace now. On my knees, though, I can also just do regular push-ups, but those are still a bit tough for me but it shows to me that my body is getting stronger and I'm very happy about that. And I'm just very happy that I'm really trying to, <laughs> to improve my upper body strength because I've had issues with my back and shoulders for as long as I can remember, essentially. Yes, so I'm very happy about that. So yeah, let's talk about... <laughs> knitting. First off, I would like to talk about the Flocon Vest by Rui Yamamuro. So starting off with the construction, you cast on a number of stitches, then you increase at the edges, creating this really nice increase line. Then you knit all the way down and you do some armhole shaping, then you pick up stitches for the front, uh, you, you work one side first, you do some shoulder shaping to make the, yeah, to make the vest sit nicely on your shoulder. Essentially what happens when you increase here at the, the back, the stitches will go this this way when you pick them up they're they're slanted and so in order to correct that you have to decrease some stitches on this side so yeah that that's what i've done here and then at the same time as you're working this section you're also doing the neck shaping then you pick up the other side, do exactly the same thing, connect them at the center, knit uh, straight all the way down, do the armhole shaping, and then you connect the front to the back. And then you start working this stitch pattern called the rigid slip stitch. And I'll put a picture here of the completed vest so you can get a better view of the, the pattern. Yeah, so you work all the way down and then you finish with some one by one twisted rib. And then you're actually then at that point supposed to pick up for the sleeves, sleeves and for the neck and do the one by one rib there as well. But as you can see, I already did that. And I did so because I'm working with yarn that is limited. <laughs> so I bought this yarn when I was living in Japan last year from a company called Itobatake. They, I believe now offer their own spun yarn, but they, at least I believe they started off by selling remnants from factories that they worked with because Initially, this was just a dyeing business, a yarn dyeing business, yes. So let me give you some information <laughs> on the yarn. These are all lace weight. I'm holding four, yes, four strands together. 
This one is called, well, yeah, it's, it's, it's just, it doesn't have a name. It's just mohair and <laughs> it's in the color gray nepumoku, which, oh, if I remember correctly, means heathered gray. So yeah, you can see specks of black and white in the mohair, which I think is pretty cool. The yardage is 360 meters per 50 grams, and it is 90% Angora mohair and 10% nylon. Then these two yarns are pretty similar. This one, however, is a one ply, and this is a two ply yarn, but they have the same yardage, 700 meters per 100 grams, or 350 meters per... 50 grams, yes. Yeah, <laughs> I did the math right, yes. I don't know which one is Hanori wool in the color matcha or and which one is Kambocha in the color Midori because matcha and Midori are both green colors. But um, yeah, I think that's <laughs> besides the point. Yeah, I am really liking working with these four yarns. Usually I don't... I don't know, I don't really work with uh, a lot of strands held together, but since the yarn is so thin and they really matched and I was just, basically I, I, found, I found this yarn in my stash when I was trying to reorganize it and I was just kind of seeing if there was a way that I could use these 100 gram balls that I had for a project and so you quite quickly come to the conclusion that you're going to have to mix some uh, mix some yarn and uh, yeah I'm very very happy with the color actually it looks really nice I started off first with just three strands these but then I was a bit off gauge and so I added this one and uh, I think it has worked out. I have been using five millimeter needles for this project, the recommended needle size. And so far, so good. I was, I don't know. I, so yes. Okay. So I did the one by one twisted rib and then I did an Italian bind off. I think that's also in the pattern. I really have been enjoying this uh, bind off. I think it looks really clean, but I think for some reason I might have bound off too tightly. And so the stitches are skewing a bit. And I don't know, for some reason, the, the collar kind of looks a bit strange when it's not on a body and yeah I was a bit worried about that uh, th the night that I finished the ribbing there but I actually think it looks quite okay when I'm actually wearing it So this is how it looks. You can still see, I think, that it skews a bit, but I'm hoping that that works out when uh, I block it. If not, I'll just have to unravel the bind off because I think I pretty evenly picked up the stitches. So I don't think that that should be an issue. Or maybe I'm just seeing something that other people are not seeing if so please <laughs> let me know so yeah now I kind of have to just work in the round all the way down and do the ribbing so it's not too much of thinking that's uh, going on I'm very excited to um, to have this piece finished actually oh I think even this combination would look really nice also you might have seen these pair of jeans in uh, some of the podcast episodes it's actually a pair of french vintage trousers that i bought 
during the pandemic and I went to my parents a couple of weeks ago and picked it up and I am really liking the way it looks. So yeah, there is that. As for my experiences knitting out this pattern, it's really nice. The instructions are very clear. I didn't have any issues to be honest. It's just a good pattern in my opinion, well written. Yeah, so um, that's the flocon vest. Now, moving on to <laughs> what I think I can now consider to be one of my arch nemesis within knitting. It's the Hana Hana <laughs> Mittens by Noriko Ichikawa. I have had a lot of struggles trying to knit mittens and I finally managed to, to knit up a pair that actually feels nice and fits uh, back I think in, in January if I'm correct. So this pattern originally calls for a very light fingering weight yarn and I really struggled to get the mittens to fit and I wasn't liking the type of fabric that it was creating. I mean, the pattern is really beautiful and striking in my opinion, but I was just thinking that realistically, if I were to make these in a light fingering weight yarn, I would never wear them. <laughs> and I think this has also come from me trying to kind of go out of the bounds of what's written in patterns. But in the end, you know, I think we're all different people. We all have our own personal preferences and needs. And a pattern is not always going to give you exactly what you want. And so it's okay to try and experiment and do different things. And that is a sentiment that I'm going to try and keep going as I continue on my knitting journey, so to speak. So in this case, I decided to try and felt uh, these mittens. And so what I'm gonna attempt, okay, so yeah, what I'm going to attempt is I'm going to knit these far bigger than they're supposed to be. I didn't change the pattern. I just chose a thicker yarn and thicker needles. I'm using four millimeter needles. I think the pattern calls for two and a half, if I'm correct. And this is East Texas Camgarn, which is a sports weight yarn. Yes. And uh, these are the colors white 0051 and tomato 0917. Yeah, so my plan is to just knit this up bigger than what it's supposed to be for, for my hand size, and then I'll throw them in the wash. So not really a hardcore felting process. So how I came up with this idea is that when I was working on my first pair of mittens that I completed, I made one mitten and it was too small and then for some reason it went into the wash and it shrunk a bit it felted a bit not significantly just a tiny bit and i really liked the fabric that it created so i thought hmm maybe if i try this on the hana hana mittens and just throw it in the wash at about 30 degrees just with the rest of my wash it um, it might felt in the same way since it's the same yarn and it's also color work. So yeah, this is a bit of an experiment. As you can see, I've passed the thumb section. So I just need to go up, decrease, and then go back for the thumb. And then it is done. Oh, well, I have to put it in the wash, but yeah. So I'm excited for that. This is definitely not a priority, especially because it's actually starting to become warm here in the Netherlands. So 
yeah, this is just kind of my random project. This next project, I'm very, very excited to talk about because it took me out of my comfort zone and I am really, really happy with how it is turning out. So, yeah, uh, okay, let me give you a bit of a backstory. So, <laughs> a couple of months ago, I was scrolling Pinterest and I saw this beautiful vintage t shirt. I don't know, it was a, a short sleeved sweater. Do you call that a t shirt? Anyway, <laughs> I, I saw it and I thought, oh my gosh, that would be so brilliant to knit and for some reason I don't know I clicked wrongly and it disappeared whoosh, gone off into the ether <laughs> and I was a bit sad about it because I thought it looked really beautiful and then for some reason two days ago I found it again and I also managed to find a free version of this pattern so let me tell you about the piece. I'll uh, show it here. Ta-da! It is, wait, I need to look this up. So this is a knitting pattern from a German knitting magazine. It's called Constanze Strickmode, and it's from their fourth issue of 1954. The pattern is called Modell 40, Damenpullover mit runder gerippte Passe. So, women's pullover with a round ribbed yoke. I mean, the title says what the, the thing is. <laughs> uh, nothing too interesting there. Yeah, so that's the pattern. I thought it was absolutely stunning. And I looked on Ravelry and I, I think I also checked Reddit. Someone else also found this pattern and really wanted it. And uh, someone found it via the Wayback Machine. So I'll leave a link to that in the description down below. But yeah, it's just a tiny pattern, a tiny block of pattern telling you what to do. This is actually my first German and first German vintage pattern that I'm knitting. And so it was an interesting experience, but actually not too overwhelming. I am planning on making, again, a vlog about this uh, specific uh, piece. So I'll show you what I have so far. I have this. Okay, so let me first tell you about the construction. It's actually pretty straightforward for a vintage pattern. It is bottom up. You start with the back, you do two by two rib. Then once you've done that, I believe you increase some stitches and then you do some waist shaping and then you start increasing for the sleeves. So, yeah, you don't actually knit the sleeves separately. I don't know how you would call that, but um, yeah, that's pretty standard for vintage uh, patterns. And then you do some shoulder shaping by casting off stitches at the back. Then you essentially work up to the armholes the same way as the back for the front. But then you cast off at the center and then you do essentially the same sleeve shaping. But then you create this round yoke. Yeah, you create this. So <laughs> basically you, you cast off here making this shape. And after you've done that, you pick up all the stitches around the neckline. So you've made a very deep neckline. Um, basically, well, <laughs> I, I shouldn't be going into depth now because I'm messing up uh, my the, the terms here at, at this point, but I'll get it right in, in the vlog, I promise. So yeah, you, you cast off here and then 
once you've done all the the stuff for the rest of the front you pick up all the stitches or well you pick up stitches along this edge and then you do the two by two rib then some garter stitch two by two rib garter stitch two by two rib garter stitch and then you pick up stitches from the back and then you knit up straight uh, flat for the I don't know the collar yeah at the end so I actually I was surprised that it was actually the the whole yoke motif thing was actually only at the front and not the back and I was just thinking you know I would actually like to try and do it completely in the in the round and getting the back as well so yeah that's what i've done with this so you can see i did the the pattern at the front and i did the pattern at uh the back so what wait let me just tell you the the yarn that i'm using you might i think yes if you've watched a couple of episodes back you might have seen this yarn before I think this is some leftover brandless yarn it's supposedly from the UK it's 100% lamb's wool and I just bought a whole kilogram of a cone uh, of it for one different project for the Isaga archives collection but I don't know, I just felt that I should be using this uh, this yarn for something else. So uh, yeah, it's lace weight, 400 meters per 50 grams, and I'm holding two strands together. Again with the two strands, but uh, this is really <laughs> out of the ordinary for me to be working on um, two projects at the same time with uh, two strands of of yarn but yeah this was really affordable yarn i think i ended up paying 70 euros for a kilogram yeah so um very nice <laughs> yeah so <laughs> going back to this piece here so the original is knit flat in two pieces and bottom up and so I wanted to try and see if I could do it top down in the round for the yoke and then flat for the rest of the body and then pick up the stitches for the sleeves. Yeah, so that's, so yeah, basically what I did first was I took the pattern, I translated it from German to English then I took the gauge of the original pattern because it uses, I believe, I actually don't know what type of yarn was used because this is vintage German yarn and that has even less information about it online than vintage English yarn. And so I kind of went off of the gauge and the knitting needles. You, you're supposed to use two millimeter and two and a half millimeter needles. And the gauge was something, yes, it was 32 stitches by 48 rows for a 10 centimeter square. So very fine work. And I just took four millimeter needles and I knit up this swatch, I blocked it, and I came out at uh, 23 stitches and 32 rows for a 10 centimeter square. And so I used those measurements to change the gauge. I can't exactly tell you right now <laughs> how I did all of that because I mean, I said I first translated it to German and then did all the calculations, but it was more so just a mixture of uh, just a, a ton of note taking. Um, yeah, I don't know if you can see it. Maybe, I don't know, maybe you can, you can <laughs> decipher this, but yeah, I don't know. I... 
it feels very silly to say, but I kind of just went with the flow and took a bit of an experimental fuel or an ex experimental approach to it. So I was translating it and then an idea popped up and then I'd write that down and all sorts of uh, things. So I'll have to decipher that and then I'll be able to put it in the vlog and I'll try my best to explain <laughs> how I uh, how I managed to do what I did. Yes, so uh, I started off with a long tail cast on. I did the garter stitch and then I did the two by two rib. And the thing is, in the original right, there is shoulder shaping at the back by binding off. And so you don't have that if you're doing a circular yoke, you can't do that. So uh, I had to just do short rows and I chose for Japanese short rows because those are the ones I'm most familiar with and best at. Maybe I can show you I actually can't tell you where they are. Wait, 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 I can, I can. Can I? Yes, okay. So here is a short row and here is a short row here. Um, where else did I do a short row? I did a short row here. This is the most noticeable short row, but I'll just have to go in there with a crochet hook and work out the tensioning a bit there. You can definitely see the short rows in the way that the front, they're all equal length, the ribbed sections. And then at the back, you can see that the top two where I placed the short rows are a bit longer. So I decided to do it in the ribbed sections and split it up in two parts. So two short rows here and two short rows below, because I think that would, that creates the most invisible ones. Because if I were to do it with the garter stitch, you would find a ridge in between these two ridges here and then at some point it would just randomly stop so you would be able to see that short row wedge very clearly. So I think this is <laughs> the best that I could do and uh, yeah I just just kept to the increases yeah, so the rate of increase at the front yoke, I calculated how much, how many those would be in total if I would also add the back to it. And I just kept those rates all throughout the pattern. You place your increases at the beginning and the end of your garter section. Yeah. So this one here, after casting on, I only increased at the end and here at the beginning and beginning end. And then here at the stockinette stitch section, I increased a couple of times, kind of randomly, cautiously, but ran <laughs> randomly. And then it was time to split the sleeves, I've never really done that for a circular yoke by myself. So I was trying to look for ratios calculations and I couldn't really find that much information, although I didn't really look all too much. I did calculate how much positive ease I would like at the bust and positive ease. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, I, I calculated how much positive ease I would like at the bust and then took those measurements and um, yeah, calculated the, the corresponding stitches to that circumference and then split that in half, put the half in the back and the other half in the front. And then I calculated a number of stitches for the arms uh, as well. Also taking in account 
taking into account that I would also cast on a couple of stitches here at the bottom. So the first time I did that, it didn't work out. I didn't have enough stitches for the arms and then I shifted the stitches uh, again and then it seemed to have worked out. As for the armhole shaping, I'm pretty sure that generally you just cast on extra stitches between the armhole and then you work down. <laughs> but I don't know what I was thinking, but I first did a couple of increases and then cast on. And I don't know if, if it's okay, but this is how the sleeve turned out. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not too sure what, what to think about it, but uh, I tried it on and it looked quite all right. And um, <laughs> I was wondering, maybe I should just rip this out, this, this section out and uh, just, I don't know, modify the armhole shaping again and do something else. And, um, but <laughs> I got this comment uh, from my boyfriend. He said, um, I was, I, I don't know what I said. I, I said, I, I think I asked him if it looked weird and he said, it doesn't look weird. And then I kept asking him the same question. I don't know, hoping for a different answer and confirmation that I thought it was weird. And he said, you know, it's supposed to look some way regardless. So, so I don't know for that, for, for some reason that just made it click for me in my mind that I should just leave it as is. And, you know, in a future project, I can try something else. And, you know, that's also a way of learning, you know, I am someone who is very willing to rip out pieces and redo things. But I think sometimes I should have a bit more grace for myself when it comes to mistakes or not getting it uh, completely perfect there there all there will always be a new project that i can you know try try again so having said that let me try it on for you so the back i'm sure it's all rolled up and I was right. Okay. Also, uh, I said that I was knitting this flat. I am. Uh, I just knit a, a, a tiny section flat and then I used some bright yellow ta tape, uh, yarn to uh, seam the sides, just temporarily, just to see how the armholes would uh, would fit so let me get this all sorted out yes so this is how it's looking right now i did want a bit of a wide uh, sleeves because the the pattern also has it so i was a bit concerned at the space at the back i thought it would look a bit weird I thought it was looking a bit weird, um, but I think it the the shaping will also slightly improve as I knit downwards and there will be more pulling from the fabric at the bottom because now everything is rolling up and it's fitting a bit weirdly. I mean, for instance, the sleeve here looks weird just because I, I haven't com completely finished it, but I think it looks fabulous i think it looks really pretty i'm not too sure if i'm going to to go back and do the collar this is quite as you can see quite a light fabric well the original is also quite light but i think i might want to make a sweater i don't know a, a sweater design for this uh, i'll have to see but i am very very proud as at no I'm very very proud that I uh, <laughs> that I did this
The back is also looking really nice. I think I did the right amount of short row shaping. I think this would be a really nice summer piece. I, I think it looks so good already. And yeah, so I mean, now, even looking at it now, it's not completely done. I've gotten past the hardest stuff. Right now it's just adding a couple of rows to the sleeves and then just knitting straight down. I don't want to do any waist shaping. I think I just want it to be a bit loose, loose hanging. Uh, yeah, so it's essentially just a bit of stock and knit stitch and then we're good to go. So I'm so happy. Yeah, I, I, I think it looks fine. I think it looks good. Yeah, I am very, very pleased with this. This is so cool. And I'm so proud that I really went outside of my comfort zone. German is a language that um, has haunted me. <laughs> my entire life. I've lived in, in Germany for a couple of years as a kid that is and so I never really learned to be completely fluent and sometimes I try and read in German or listen to German things such as uh, Dark, the TV show, which is really good by the way, but um, yeah, I don't know, for, for some reason trying out the a vintage German pattern was really huge for me. And I'm very happy that uh, I've done so. And I'm just also happy that I'm out of the woods in terms of getting a nice fit. So yeah, hopefully this will be done by the next podcast. Then I would still like to talk about the Isager archive collection. Uh, that I've been working on. So far, I've only been able to finish the first piece, which was the collar cardigan. And I've been having a bit of issues with the yarn. For the most part, well, there are a, a good number of patterns that use two yarns held together. And I try to circumvent that by finding a, a proper yarn substitution and uh, there's also been an issue in terms of of colors for instance for the inga sweater i had chosen some yarbo astrid which is i don't have any information it's a dk weight 100 percent super wash wool i had chosen the colors dark purple green and some weird sort of beige. I thought it was beige but it came out a bit more pinkish and I knit up the motif for the pattern. I, I knit up a swatch and it was not giving the vibes that I wanted it to have and so I kind of tried to figure out how I could solve this and I was first thinking about a, a substitute. I have some drops Alaska here and I thought that this would be a nice combination. I still do think it's a nice combination. The only thing that I was worrying about with these colors for the most part is that this is non superwash and I didn't know how how things would be in terms of the yarn growing. So yeah so I think it would have been, I think in hindsight, it would have been fine regardless, but I ended up deciding to order some more yarn and get uh, this lighter purple. As you can see, there is a bit less of uh, contrast, but I think more than enough to create a really nice sweater. The pattern looks like it's going to be really easy so i think i'll be able to get through this really fast maybe i'll have time to even wear it um well i mean some days it's really hot and some days it's raining a lot here so um yeah so i'm very excited for this i'm having a bit of issues with the norma sweater by 
my favorite knitwear. My favorite things knitwear, yes. Well, I wouldn't say really issues. I just need to sit down for a second and work out the Italian cast on or tubular cast on. I just got a bit confused when I watched the video about it. So I just need to sit down and, and watch that. And I think that sweater will be smooth sailing as well. There's not too much color work. And um, it's also, I believe, a drop shoulder. So not too much of shaping. And I mean, drop shoulders are very forgiving <laughs> as compared to, for instance, a, a set in sleeve in terms of shaping. So I think that will be fine. I'm also looking to knit up some summer knits because it's going to get warmer and uh, I'd like to wear some of my knits. And I have some exciting projects with that. I think I'm just on such a roll at this moment. I'm learning a lot. I'm planning a lot for quite a couple of uh, projects. I'm, I'm really excited to show all the stuff that I have planned to do this year. So yeah, I think I'm going to end this with something that was gifted to me by my sweet sister for a special occasion. I got a gift card for this sustainable sewing sewing shop yeah and i got this fabric it is from koka which is a japanese brand the reason i actually got this fabric is because i was searching for free sewing patterns and there were a lot of japanese ones offered for free and there was this very tiny bag i'll leave uh, picture here I'll put a picture here and I thought it would look really cute and I was thinking maybe I could make this into a tiny project bag for myself so yeah I got the the fabric for it I also got some organic cotton filling I guess you could use this for quilting I'm not too sure but I wanted to use this for a case to sew, so, so very square, triangular projects that won't be too hard. As for the closure of the bag, I have actually not opened this, but here are the two closures that I got as well. Nothing too interesting, to be honest. And then finally, this is actually knitting related. I got some, I don't know how you would call it in, in English, band, band, I guess. It's just a ribbon, that's the word. In, in Dutch, it's band. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I got some ribbon, this beautiful flower ribbon. And the reason why I got this is because I've been wanting to knit a traditional Norwegian sweater, cardigan. And when I was researching what I would need for such a cardigan, I figured that I I found out that I needed some ribbon. Some ribbon gets sewn on the front here, all around the neck, and then here again. And traditional Norwegian ribbon <laughs> was quite hard to find really really expensive actually uh, to get on online i found maybe i'm just not searching at the right places but then i found this one and i thought you know what i think this might work as well and i was thinking of making a green cardigan because i like green stuff so i was thinking of designing that myself i don't know when I would like to do it, but I just bought it in case it would sell out because I do think this is brandless. So yeah, I think I, I have enough for, for the project. I have enough for the project. But yeah, I think that's everything that I wanted to talk about today.
As always, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you soon in another video. Bye bye.